Okay, guys, I realize I'm a bit late with my girlfriend's story, but when you read my latest update, you'll see that I was quite consumed with what's been happening to us. Nothing happened since the incident last night. The police called to check in with us this morning. They still have no clue what's going on, really. So anyway, her story. I'll begin by telling you a bit about us. As I said before, I was born in Bosnia, then moved to a nearby country in Balkans where I grew up. I came to the US over six years ago. My girlfriend was born in India, grew up in Kenya until she was three when she moved to Canada. I met her a little over a year ago, and we've been together ever since. So my girlfriend, let's call her Lila, did have a few encounters with Rose. The first one she remembers was on the plane. She was a flight attendant for Air Canada for several years. One day, about six years ago, she was flying her regular flight, but she can't remember what destination it was. It lasted maybe two hours. Once they took off and the seatbelt signs went away, she got up to serve complimentary drinks. Halfway through her section, she met Rose. She didn't know it at the time, of course. She said that something was terribly off about the woman. She had this creepy grin on her face. She was pale and kept staring at her. When Lila offered her a drink and some snacks, she got no answer, only a wider and creepier fucking smile. Then Rose spoke. I have something for you, she said in a voice that definitely wasn't natural for a woman her age. Her voice belonged more to a teenager than an adult. There was something playful but terrifying in it. Now, Lila has seen some shit while flying, so she wasn't taken back by this interaction. Yeah, what would that be, Mom? Don't patronize me, you bitch. She said that fast, like really fast, and her jaw was closed while saying it. Then she started grinding her teeth, never letting go of that fucking smile. This was a red flag for Lila. When passengers get aggressive, attendants walk away unless there is physical contact. All right, well, you have a pleasant rest of the flight, Mum, okay? I have this for you, she whispered, taking an orange from behind her back, never moving a muscle on her face, still a teenage voice. Like when a 12-year-old hits puberty kind of voice. No thanks. Lila decided to call it a day with the crazy cunt and walk away. Oh, but you should. Or one day, you know, one day. And that's that. Lila gave her the fuck off look and walked away. The lady never bothered her again during that flight. During that flight. Lila went home a few days later and she didn't think much of what happened. When her mum asked her how her flight was, Lila smiled and said, good, other than one really crazy lady. Mom wanted to hear more, so Lila started telling her about what happened. By the time she said the word orange, her mum started crying. Lila was in shock. It was story time. Apparently, when Lila was a baby in Kenya, she had woken her parents up a few times with loud crying. When they'd walk into her room, she'd have an orange next to her in her crib. Everything in the house would be locked. Windows, doors, everything. It got to the point where her parents moved the crib into their room and installed security cameras. Well, on Lila's third birthday that morning, when they woke up, they saw an orange laying on Lila's chest. They were absolutely taken over by horror. They called the police. The police came and looked over the camera footage. The cameras clearly showed a woman opening the front door, which was locked by the way, then showed Rose walking into Lila's room. She then placed an orange on Lila and just stood there for like an hour 
just standing there, with her head tilted to the left, looking at her. By this point, it is unnecessary to say that Lila was completely horrified. Her mum wasn't doing much better either. Anyways, to keep the story going, her parents didn't know what to do. The police couldn't find the mysterious woman, and no security measure other than 24-7 bodyguards, which they couldn't afford, was enough. Some of their family was already in Canada and were pressuring them to move. So this incident was a final push. They moved and left this creature with the orange behind until that day on that flight. Lila was completely unable to do anything for the next few days after that conversation. She didn't eat much, didn't communicate with anyone. After a while, she got better. There was no sign of further horror, so she started believing it was all a fucked up coincidence and went on with her life. She hasn't seen Rose in years. Last time she encountered Rose was one month before she met me. Lila did many transatlantic flights. She loved them. Long travels, decent money, seeing the world. She had it all. One month before we met, she was coming back from a Hong Kong trip. She flew to Toronto, I believe. The crew had a nice hotel. Everyone had their own room. Lila was on the third floor. She loved drinking at that time and got pretty drunk that night. She passed out at about one in the morning. At around four, she heard a knock on the door, then another one, and another. But they weren't loud or fast knocks. No, they were slow and silent, yet loud enough to wake her drunk ass up. She rolled out of bed, thinking it was one of her crew members. Not thinking too clearly, she opened the door, and there she stood. Lila said that the lights in her room were off, but the TV was on. The light from the screen was shining on Rose's face, shining on the grin, shining on the pearly white teeth, bright red lipstick, and a white face, paired up with a slightly tilted head. You know how when you're drunk, some scary shit can sober you up immediately. Yeah, she just let out this helpless sound of horror. They both stood there. Rose started rocking back and forth. Every time she'd rock back, she'd reveal red shoes hidden underneath her white dress. Her teeth were grinding. Then she pulled out an orange. Well, what do you want from me? Lila begged. Rose kept rocking with a smile. Please, just leave me alone. I don't have anything. You take it. You take it now. He will too. She said that in the same teenager voice, only a little more playful tone was used this time. Like a happy-ish child. I don't know if it was her defense mechanism activating, but Lila took the fucking orange and threw it over Rose's head and screamed, get the fuck out of here and take this shit with you, you freak. That was the first time either of us saw Rose lose her smile. White teeth disappeared underneath the thick red lips. Her head went back from a slight tilt into its natural position. I'll see you soon, both of you, she said in a normal adult voice. This was scarier than the childish voice. Lila says it's because it sounded real, like a conscious, normal person making a threat. Of course, at that time, Lila didn't know me and had no idea what both of you was relating to. She assumed it'd be her mum. That brings us to today. Yeah. If you heard the update from my previous story, you saw that our room was broken into by Rose. Logical assumption. Some pictures of the break-in were taken before the police came. They'll be up today. Some stuff in our room was moved around, 
Honestly, we're scared. Clueless as to what's going on. I'll be Skyping with my mum soon to see if she has any answers. Lila will talk to her mum too. I'm personally just shocked at these developments. I never believed anything like this was even possible. Quite honestly, if one of you wrote this story here, I wouldn't believe shit you said. And I can't blame you if you don't believe me. But if you have any idea what this might be, please tell me. I assume it's some sort of cult, but the only thing that fucks with my head is the fact that Rose knew my girlfriend before I did. Everything so far could have been explained in a logical way, but this took it to a supernatural level. Were they putting an effort into getting us together? How did they do that? And more importantly, why? For what possible benefit? Fuck this man. Fuck this. <laughs>